Hi guys, welcome to another Living in CTV video. David here. Today we will know the story behind South Africa's most famous lion, the Simba Chips. But you believe me, stay tuned because once again this video will blow your mind. Simba the Lion is now one of our country's most recognizable symbols and the tagline roars with flavor instinctively resonates in our ears whenever we see him or try a new flavor. Simba chips were and still are a pleasure in lunch boxes across the country and are one of our childhood treasures. With the development and lunch of various comparable brands such as Knickknacks, Ghost Pops, Doritos and Lay's, the brand accumulated the highest market share with a 67% value shared in the local chip market. The brand has a 60-40 year history. Since the Gravestein family first introduced the brand to the market in 1957, it has been held by a number of companies. Fed Food in 1977, Food Corp in 1992 and presently PepsiCo, which purchased the brand in 1999. Okay, so let's go back in time to understand the history better. Omar Rusks began in Molteno, a tiny town in the northeastern Cape in 1939. Oma Grievenstein and her friends were inspired by the Great Depression to find ways to help their community. Oma Grievenstein began by making rusks from scratch using a family recipe. After selling these delectable delights to local farming families, orders began to flood in and a beloved iconic South African brand was established. Following on from my introduction to Omer Gravenstein and her famed Omer Rusks, I will tell you about another member of its extraordinary family. As it turned out, Omer company faced a dilemma that other businesses could only envy. They had a lot of cash on hand, but had no idea how to invest it. Imagine that being your biggest problem, eh? As a result, in 1952, Oma sent her three sons overseas for a change of scenery and no doubt to sniff out some major ideas. They went to popular food fairs in search of any ideas that could be applied to the company's expansion plan. Diversification provides a great boost to brand image and company profitability. It was in Germany that her son Leon first saw and tasted a snack known as a crisp, which had grown popular in the United Kingdom and throughout Europe. Big idea light bulb moment. Cha -ping! In the following days, he met a guy named Erman Lay, no guesses as to who he was, who turned out to be the foundations for what was soon to be the extension of the Gravenstein Empire. Leon and Herman had a conversation and shared some vital information which Leon took back to South Africa. When they returned, the sons informed Oma of their findings and the mother was so excited at Leon's suggestion that the crisp be marketed under a new brand. But what should it be called? Simba Chips was picked after some thinking. Simba translates to lion in Swahili, which was the lingua franca spoken on the farms of the Cape at the time by men who had come down from East Africa. The brand Simba, the king of snacks, was introduced to the South African market in 1957 and apart from the potato chip crisp being a new snack, Simba Chips presented the first flavor chips unique selling point, let's say it, at the time. Crisps had only one flavor in Europe and the United States until then and they were hand salted by the buyer. Cheese and onion, tomato sauce and salt and vinegar were the initial Simba chip flavors. Needless to say, the product and brand took off. And within a few months, the original factory 
in Isando who was producing packets of chips going through tons of first-class potatoes and setting up a distribution network to ensure that the chips were delivered fresh to the stores. An excellent product with maintained quality, standards and brand promise for customer satisfaction. And there you go guys, now you know the story behind the Simba chips, I hope you guys enjoyed, you guys subscribe, you guys share and like, destroy that like button and I will see you in the next Living SATV video.